Hey, so remember Labyrinth Zone, that one stage that nobody but me likes? So what if they just did that again, but like, in a way that's so uninteresting and also isn't placed after two stages I'm not fond of so that even I'm not, like, into it at all? <laughs> you know it must be bad if even I, the Labyrinth Defender, don't care for it. I do like the background, I think that's neat, but I don't know. Like, Tidal Tempest doesn't have the cool aspects that Sonic 2 and 3 add to their water levels. And again, I didn't care for Marble Zone or Spring Yard Zone in Sonic 1, so Labyrinth Zone is weirdly enough of an actual break for me in that game. But yeah. I guess Tidal Tempest isn't the worst. There's certain sections that are actually less rude than Labyrinth, which is weird. Also, I love that the uh, past version is a cave. That's actually pretty neat. You know, actually, aesthetically, this one's pretty rad. I might even place Tidal Tempest above uh, Labyrinth Zone in terms of just how it looks. Maybe not quite as much in the music department, though. I still think I like Labyrinth Zone's music a little more. Alright, well, that's all I have to say about uh, Tidal Tempest, so I guess I finally have a little bit of a break to talk about some of the other aspects of this game that uh, aren't just about every round, not zone, as I was about to say. So, uh, Sonic CD and Sonic the Hedgehog 2 were actually in development around the same time. See, Sonic Team actually split slightly, so the Sega Team working on Sonic 2 was headed by Yuji Naka. Meanwhile, Sonic CD was handled by mainly by Naoto Oshima, the original creator of Sonic. So... The games do feel a lot different, and quite frankly, I do absolutely definitely prefer what Sonic 2 had to offer over this game. I do think it's neat how the games did have, you know, two design teams and you can really see sort of the difference in their ideas. Uh, apparently this game and Sonic 2 were actually, like, supposed to come together. Like, they were supposed to be the same game. But because of how different Sonic CD was... Uh, excuse me, Wall, I don't... I think I remember giving you permission to move about. How dare you? Presumptuous bastard of a stone slab. But anyway, yeah, uh, because Sonic CD had uh, really gone different directions in its development. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. This is deadly. Does the shield give you immunity to the little water things? It's either that or their hitbo hitboxes are very generous. But anyway, yeah, as I was saying... Uh, because Sonic CD developed in its own way, they did end up being uh, their own separate things. Which again, I can appreciate, but also, but definitely preferred one over the other. And hey, the past signpost actually really stayed with me this time. That was very lucky. Uh, so yeah. You know, I will give this game one thing, though. Uh, the whole, like, springs placed so that you just go back and forth between them trick that Sega really likes putting in their games for some reason actually has a purpose in this game because that is a guaranteed spot to activate the time travel uh, warp. So, you know, I'll give them one thing. They turn something that's, like, kind of rude and, you know, more or less pointless into something that actually has a point. Props off to that. But, yeah, uh, we should be at the end of the stage. Yep, we are indeed. Yeah. 
Uh, there is a also cut content, but I don't actually want to talk about that now because that's closer to the end of the game. I also will probably save soundtrack talk for a different episode because uh, soundtrack is kind of a big thing. It's actually a uh, major difference between the uh, Japanese slash European and American ports. And in case you're wondering, I'm actually playing the Japanese version, so you're getting that version of the soundtrack because this is what I prefer. Uh, but anyway, I'm already, I'm already lapsing into sound talk, soundtrack talk, if I could speak correctly. But uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna stay away from that. Instead, uh, boy, how about those psychedelic colors, huh? That's quite the choice for stage background. Oh, hey, and, uh, you know, I don't think I've really hit many of those in prior special stages, but yeah, there are uh, more standard springs that are different from the fans that propel you in that way that you just saw that helped me destroy that UFO because I was going slowly enough. Have I mentioned that the um, fact that the special stage is being in 2D is kind of annoying because it makes hitting the UFOs bad? <laughs> I don't think I have, but yeah, uh, I'm not fond of the special stages because mm, 3D movement on a 2D plane means that it is just the absolute worst to actually hit stuff sometimes. Uh, also, I really like the good future version of Tidal Tempest because this area has gone from like, you know, possibly an ancient structure to this really nice laboratory that seems to host, like, plant species. Uh, so this is uh, kind of similar to Sonic 1's boss from um, uh, Labyrinth Zone in that you actually have to follow Robotnik for a bit, uh, but it's not actually a death trap like the Labyrinth Zone's boss was. Rather, you just have to follow him and hit him enough times so you can actually escape the endless uh, corridor. And then this is the second part of the boss, where he makes bubbles around himself for some reason. I mean, he also tries to shoot you, but like, this is the worst shield. This is a shield that allows me to live for longer. I'm not gonna harp about it, harp on about it that much, cause like, that's everybody's takeaway is. Why did Eggman make a bubble shield? The Why would you do that? I guess the worst thing is like, you could get trapped in the uh, breathing animation and end up getting hit by something, but it's not really a big deal. And as you can see, that didn't really come into play there, so uh, didn't go well for Robotnik. But will it go better in the bad future version? The answer is obviously no, because Bubble Shield, come on. That being said, I really love the aesthetics for this stage in the bad future. The song's great because it sounds so alien, and the color palette's hideous, but also it looks like Eggman just made this place like a warehouse or something. And also put alien structures in as well, because there's those weird yellow pole things. Uh, so you might actually see more of the endless corridor. Nope. <laughs> you do see the walls coming down, though. Uh, if you don't hit Robotnik enough, then uh, those will still be up. And you'll just have to keep following him for a while. But anyway, now we're at the easy part of the fight. I do like the debris in the uh, battlefield, though. That's kind of a neat touch. But, doesn't matter too much, because we are going to work this sucker to death. Come on now, work this sucker to death. God, I love this song. I literally don't know what to say about Bubble Shield. <laughs> it's kind of like that one really bad boss in Sonic 2, but instead of pain, 
these just help you live, as I said before. So yeah, that that's the boss. Bubble shield, guys. Bubble shield. It's not a good idea. Robotnik, you could have made any other shield, but you made a bubble shield. It's a bad idea.